Good afternoon and welcome from the University of Maribor into the void of the virtual space, but also especially I am very happy to look into very real faces in front of me. My name is Sebastian Schäfer and I'm the managing director of the Institute for the Danube Region and Central Europe. It's a great pleasure to be able to moderate again the Danubius Awards 2022. It's a great pleasure to not be sitting in front of a screen. I know it's not true for each and everybody because we have people that are in front of a screen right now, but nevertheless, um, I am convinced that in this hybrid setting, we will nevertheless make the best out of this, and I'm very much looking forward to the next 90 minutes where we honor scientific excellence in the Danube region. And without further ado, I will ask the start of the welcome message from University Professor Dr. Martin Polaschek, who is the Austrian Minister of Education, Science and Research. Dear members of the Danube Rector's Conference, dear award winners, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the 2022 Danubius Award Ceremony. Although I am unfortunately not able to be with you personally today, it is great that the ceremony can take place in person again after two years of virtual ceremonies. As you are at the University of Maribor today, with which I enjoyed many successful cooperation activities as former rector of the University of Graz, my special greetings go to the rector of the University of Maribor, Professor Dr. Kacic, who kindly hosts this meeting. With the Danubius Award, the Danubius Mid-Career Award, the Danubius Young Scientist Awards conferred today, we are bringing the Danube region, its talents and excellent researchers into the spotlight. And we are promoting exchange between scientists and researchers in the region. With more than 100 Danubius Award winners already since 2011, a great network is developing, which I hope will continue to grow and flourish in the years to come. The Danube region provides many opportunities for cross-border and regional cooperation among universities as well as research organizations. And there are indeed plenty of common challenges along the Danube and beyond which we need to jointly address and develop solutions for. The role of scientists and researchers has changed profoundly in the last decade. On the one hand, scientists and researchers are in a high demand to deliver fast results and provide evidence for critical policy decisions and they have become indispensable in explaining and communicating the current knowledge available. On the other hand, we see a worrying rise in skepticism towards science and research, as well as towards democracy in general, which creates a wide range of problems for and in our societies. We need to work together to counter this skepticism, and I am confident that all of you present, and especially the awardees of today, can and will contribute with their work towards demonstrating and communicating the relevance of science and research. Let me extend my special wishes to Director Diana Mishkova for her Danubius Award 2022 and Associate Professor Tamara Marzeniuk as the winner of the Danubius Mid-Career Award. Congratulations also to the 13 young researchers and scientists from across the region on having been selected as this year's awardees. With that, I wish you all a wonderful award ceremony and all the best for your further research careers. Thank you very much.
And with this, we uh, continue with an introduction and welcome by Magister Barbara Weidgruber, Director General for Scientific Research and International Relations at the Austrian Federal Ministry for Education, Research and Science. Distinguished guests, um, following the welcome message of my minister, I would like to express my gratitude of being able to be here and also for the University of Maribor for hosting this event so that we are able after two years uh, of virtual meetings to have this meeting in person. Um, we are very grateful to be able, in cooperation with the Institute of the Danube region and Central Europe, um, to be here and celebrate, as was said before, excellence. Um, before we do so, uh, before you all receive your certificates, let me express our full solidarity with the people and the research community in the Ukraine. The Ukraine is one of our partners in the EU strategy for the Danube region and this year's presidency. We will continue our support to the Ukrainian researchers both in the European Union and in their home country. Moreover, we hope that there can be soon efforts for reconstruction and rebuilding to be supported. We have created the Danubius Awards several years ago, also with the aim of a better integration of all Danube region researchers in the European research area. After the political framework was renewed last year, the member states are now working hard along 20 different action lines to create a single borderless market for research and innovation, fostering the free movement of researchers, scientific knowledge and innovation based on a shared set of values and principles, such as academic freedom, ethics and integrity, inclusiveness and gender equality, or open science. With view to researchers' international mobility and career development, a number of initiatives are on the way under the umbrella of the European Framework for Research Careers. The agreement to reform for research assessment is also central in this respect, and we hope that many research organizations and universities will sign it until the 15th of November so that the implementation can start as soon as possible. Moreover, a research and innovation career observatory is developed in cooperation with the OECD to monitor labor market trends for researchers and to be able to react on them. Horizon Europe, the EU framework program for research and innovation is in full swing, as most of you know, and apart from the EU member states, 16 countries have already been associated to Horizon Europe, including all of those that are part of the European strategy for the Danube region. So we are very proud that we have this common region also in the framework program. This offers plenty of opportunities for collaboration, also through the significantly expanded widening instruments created to increase research and innovation capacities and to reduce the research and innovation gap across Europe. Coming back to the statement of Minister Polashek in which he touched upon the raising science skepticism, let me reiterate that the dialogue between science and society may not always be easy, and researchers often have to get out of their comfort zone to do so when participating in those activities. However, they are essential for building and maintaining trust in science and research, and also in helping explain the research processes and all its uncertainties that you face on a daily basis. As award winners, you also act as ambassadors for your profession, and you can contribute to enhance the trust in science. Let me end by thanking the Institute for the Danube region and Central Europe for all their efforts regarding the selection procedure, the process, the organization of today's event, and the Joint Research Center of the European Commission for the long-standing commitment and cooperation and partnership regarding the Danubius Young Scientists Awards and the University of Maribor for hosting our event. Congratulations to all of you, to all this year's Danubius awardees. Compliments on your achievements and all the best for your future careers. Thank you. Director General, Weid Gruber, thank you very much for this introduction and uh, welcome words. Um, wonderful that we have also resolved the sound issue. I would ask our friends from Zoom 
to now please stop uh, writing into the chat and we will continue <laughs> <laughs> with an introduction by Friedrich Faulhammer, who is uh, here in various capacities, but for the ceremony, he is here in his newly elected position as chairman of the Institute for the Danube region and Central Europe. Fritz, please. Yeah, th thank you very much. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, uh, dear Barbara, dear Miroslav. Yes, in my capacity as chair of the board of the IDM Institute for the Danube Region and uh, Central Europe, it's my pleasure to welcome you here at the uh, University of Maribor for this year's Danubius Awards ceremony. Moreover, it, it has been already mentioned, I'm uh, glad as well that we all can come together in person uh, for this joyful event after a very long break. Of course, it would be nice to meet in more carefree times, without Europe having to face challenges which uh, our continent has not seen for many decades. Uh, a number of countries in the Danube region are particularly affected by the crisis of the present. It is therefore of utmost importance to rely on cooperation within Europe, to rely on the power of reason as well as on solutions based on solid facts. That is why initiatives such as the Danubius Awards are so important. This prize, these prizes, which were established 11 years ago by the Austrian Ministry of Science and our Institute for the Danube Region and Central Europe, IDM, and co-initiated by the longtime chairman of the IDM, Erhard Busek, recognizes the scientific achievements of researchers from the Danube region including many young researchers. Their work, your work, contributes to challenges of the Danube region. The Danubius Awards, which were presented for the first time in 2011, not only show for how many bright minds and talented scientists the Danube region is home to, but also proves their work to being a building block for strengthening cohesion in this diverse European region. Connected by the Danube and beyond, the people of Central and Southeastern Europe share a common cultural heritage and face similar regional and global challenges. This describes the vision of the IDM. This vision sees democracy, freedom, equality, the rule of law and human rights as universal European values flourishing through dialogue and discourse. However, in order to conduct dialogue and discourse in a pur pur purposeful manner for mutual benefit and with a view to a prosperous future, it is necessary to understand problems, analyze challenges and formulate viable solutions. This is where the role of science comes into play. It develops the knowledge that is robust enough to underlay the required discourse with facts and arguments and to point to possible solutions for the future. I'm very pleased that today, together with the Austrian Ministry of Education, Science and Research, my former colleagues, we are once again honoring scientists in these in the already mentioned three categories who have made a significant contribution to the development of knowledge and understanding in the Danube region in their various fields and uh, fields of uh, research. Ladies and gentlemen, for almost 70 years, the IDM has strived to contribute to a peaceful and united Europe through the scientific study of the Danube region. The question, how Europe can shape its future and overcome existing challenges, is closely linked to the question of its special identity. The diversity of cultures, of regions, of people. This diversity being a particularly valuable resource. Central and South Eastern Europe, indeed the entire Danube region, is an example 
of how exchange and cooperation between countries with different traditions, different historical experiences, religions and diverse cultures can create added value for the whole of Europe, if only we all live and use this resource of diversity. The scientific works awarded today are testimony to this and building blocks for a better understanding of the Danube region. I would like to thank all our Ds today and all who have contributed to the Danubius Awards for their commitment. It will help to create a more democratic, peaceful and sustainable Europe. And I'm pleased to confirm that the Danubius Awards will continue under the new board of the IDM, together with the Austrian Ministry of Science, uh, and um, as, I was, I, as I has been informed, um, even there are some budgetary discussions in Austria right now, uh, this very special project will continue for the next year so that we will have much more uh, awarding ceremonies in the upcoming years. Uh, my warm congratulations go to the award winners and my appreciation to the organizers of today's event, first and foremost to our host, the University of Maribor. And now I wish us all an inspiring and enjoyable award ceremony. Thank you. Fritz, thank you very much also for these welcome words and the good news that we will continue uh, this endeavor, which is certainly one of the highlights of our um, eventful year. And now we will start with the first award, the Danubius Award, which is presented to Diana Mishkova, who um, will be um, hearing a laudatio from uh, University Professor Dr. Oliver Jens uh, Schmidt from the University of Vienna, who regrets that he cannot hold that in person, but of course recorded a video laudatio. Dear participants, dear ladies and gentlemen, Diana Mishkova, this year's recipient of the Danubius Award, has done outstanding work in two areas. The historical research of the Balkan region in the last two centuries, and the establishment and management of the Center of Advanced Study in Sofia, one of the most distinguished scientific and intellectual centers of the Danube region. What distinguishes the work of the historian Diana Mishkova? She is first and foremost an explorer of political ideas in modern Southeastern Europe. This becomes clear in two major works, which I would like to pick out as representative of numerous other publications. The Entangled History of the Balkans, which has been produced by several historians, offers a completely new view of the history of this region. Instead of adding up national case studies, instead of persisting in a national patterns of thought, the four volumes published by the renowned publishing house Brill in Leiden ask about fundamental structures of the entire region, examine ideas and social phenomena across the region. This is connected with a real methodological and theoretical turning point in the interpretation of Balkan history. This project has also succeeded thanks to the intellectual ambience created by Diana Mishkova at the Center of Advanced Study. Diana Mishkova's most recent major monograph has also changed our view of the Balkans in general. For more than 20 years, it has been a common place that the Balkans are a construct of the West, which has created a kind of inner Orient, a half Europe, a hybrid marginal phenomenon to be excluded from a pan-European history. This theory was developed on the basis of Western travel reports and media coverage, which admittedly tend to stereotype and generalize not only in the case of the Balkans. In Beyond Balkanism, Diana Mishkova reverses the perspective and asks whether concepts about this region have not also been developed in the Balkans themselves. In this way, she not only takes the region seriously and frees it from its role as a supposed 
object of Western spatial constructs, she also demonstrates that in the region itself, Balkanism was used as a concept for hegemonic projects by regional actors, above all Serbia and Romania. These concepts developed in the region were hardly less political and hegemonic than the Balkan conceptions in the West. In addition to an impressive academic oeuvre, Diana Mishkova has also achieved the feat that fewer researchers have. She has built up a research institute that impresses not only with its high academic quality, but also with the standards it has set. Over the past more than two decades, the Center of Advanced Study in Sofia has been shaped by Diana Mishkova's personality, by an intellectuality of high European standing, by openness, by a scientific ethos that relies solely on quality and performance, and not, as it is often the case, on hierarchy, patronage, or political influence. The CAS has thus created confidence in a science committed to purely intellectual ideals. Two generations of scholarship holders and guests from many countries demonstrate the success of the center, which is part of the network of the German Wissenschaftskollegen. The Center of Advanced Study occupies a central position in Bulgaria for research in the humanities and social sciences, but its charisma extends far beyond Bulgaria's borders. The success of the Center of Advanced Study, the fact that this has always represented its standards in a friendly but uncompromising manner, is to a large extent the personal achievement of Diana Mishkova, who introduced a new type of leadership to academic life in Bulgaria. It is rare that personalities who possess great leadership qualities are also intellectuals and researchers of high standing. This is true of Diana Mishkova. And so, dear Diana, may we congratulate you from the bottom of our hearts for this award, which you so richly deserve. And we now ask, of course, Jana Mitchkova to the stage to hold her acceptance uh, speech. First a picture? Okay. Please stand. Well, she needs to get the award first before she can get it. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Wonderful. Okay. Then in this case, please. I'm most grateful to the jury for this honorable recognition of my work and also to my distinguished colleague, uh, Professor Dr. Oliver Jan Schmidt, himself an outstanding researcher and prolific uh, scholar on the Nubian and Southeastern Europe for his generous, heartwarming uh, laudatio. Now, my positionality as a historian of Southeastern Europe, one who has had the privilege, due to long-term affiliation with the Center for Advanced Study in Sofia, to combine local embeddedness with a kind of extraterritorial uh, status, because the Center is an international non-governmental institution, this particular positionality has been vital for my work in many ways. First, it made possible the creation of a wide network of established and younger scholars coming from and working on Southeastern and Central Europe. A network driven by the common cause to challenge the self-centered and isolationist historical narratives prevalent in the region. Indeed, much of the credit that the Danubius Award now bestows on me 
derives to a large extent from my participation in such collaborative regional work. Its first outcome at the very beginning of this work, it was a five-volume collection, Discourses of Collective Identity in Central and Southeast Europe from the end of the 18th century till 1945, with the participation of mostly younger scholars from 14 countries, put together, which put to, uh, next to each other and dis uh, discussed a variety of texts crucial for the understanding of the identity formation and national traditions of Central and Southeastern Europe. The latest outcome of a similar collaborative work and the one mentioned by Professor Schmidt is the four volume series, series Entangled Histories of the Balkans, which looks into the transnational mechanisms of nation building, cross-cultural links and shared experiences in the region. What this kind of work brought to light is, in a way, ironic. The high degree in which the paradigms of national exceptionalism were actually created in constant dialogue, mutual borrowing, and competition. In brief, long-term dense interaction with each other. Another ambition behind my work as a locally-based historian of Southeastern Europe has been to look at European history from the vintage point of what is often defined as, as its periphery. A perspective that aspires to broaden the notion of European history by fully integrating regional history in the European narrative. Cross-regional comparison has been central to this ambition, such as the one between Southeastern, Central and Northern Europe. It also lays bare, among other things, the heuristics of comparison as it stirs questions and reveals meanings that would have otherwise remained hidden. At the end of the day, all this boils down to and has led me to explore the mechanisms behind the production of space, the making of historical regions in particular. That was the theme of a collective volume I co-edited with the Hungarian colleague of mine, Bolas Trencini, delving into the conceptual history of the European regions and boundaries, and of my book already mentioned, exploring the scholarly politics of region making on the case of the Balkans. The aspiration of both has been to move away from understanding the region, indeed any region, as a homogenizing and essentializing container concept, and more broadly, to rethink the spatial categories we are operating with, both as a matter of fact in everyday or political language, and as units of analysis. If I try to sum up the main motives behind my commitment to regional historical research in the last 20 odd years, I would foreground the following. In the first place, it is the desire to balance the prevailing center-periphery contacts and exchange, namely those between big and small European cultures, by inter-regional communication and networks. This has two important implications. On the one hand, such networks act as a counterforce to the powerful renationalization of the public and academic spheres, especially after the beginning of this century. We have to be aware that, in many cases, we can still talk about two parallel historiographic cultures in these countries, a more transnational regional one produced mainly outside of a country, and an official nationalist perspective produced locally. In the last analysis, and this is the second implication, intra-regional scholarly collaboration is an attempt at stirring conceptual innovation which is grounded in the experiences of the Nubian, Southeastern or East Central Europe, depending on the perspective, rather than always trying to catch up with or implement the latest theories conjured up further to the West usually with reference to contexts very different from our part of the world and which often engender cognitive dissonances. At the same time, however, 
the stress on connections, entanglements, and transnational approach that underpin anti-nationalist views should beware the danger of creating a supranational regional identity and groupings of expertise that can also work in a exclusionary ways. Instead, one may recall the methodological precept of Mihai Berza, a leading Romanian historian of Southeastern Europe, that when seeking to define a historical region, we should start not from territory, but from phenomena related to man and follow them each time in their entire territorial extension. In my administrative function at the helm of the Center for Advanced Study in Sofia, on the other hand, I have deemed it very important to create an environment for a more balanced scholarly interaction across the still persisting East-West divide and more broadly between intra-regional and extra-regional research communities. Multidisciplinarity is intrinsic to, the, to this kind of collective work, which seeks to shape a different epistemic community by countering general mistrust to go beyond disciplinary boundaries. I would call this epistemic community or a field new area studies. It has, come to grips, it has to come to grips with two major challenges to produce regionally relevant knowledge without secluding it in a self-referential community of regional specialists, and to enter the global debates without just reproducing the mainstream intellectual trends that circulate in the so-called Western course. Thank you. Congratulations again, Professor Diana Mishkova, and thank you very much for this uh, wonderful acceptance speech. We will uh, continue now with the Danubius Mid-Career Award, which um, will also feature a, sorry, laudatio from um, a video that we have recorded, and this uh, video was recorded by um, Diplom Kulturwissenschaften University, um, Dr. Christina Planck from the University of Natural Resources and Life Sciences, Vienna. Dear ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to give this laudatory speech to this year's Danubius Mid Career Award winner, Tamara Matsinyuk. Tamara Matsinyuk is a sociologist specialized in gender studies and she's an associate professor at the University Kiev Mohila Academy. Tamara Motsenyuk is not only a very well established member of the international scientific community, um, but she also published numerous articles in scientific journals in Ukrainian. Furthermore, her work covers the Danube area, in particular Ukraine, where she is also institutionally anchored. She's a gender expert and she works, for example, for the Ukrainian Helsinki Human Rights Union. This is in particular important uh, to mention because in that way the Ukrainian society benefits from her societal commitment as an excellent researcher. Tamara Matinyuk has contributed to diverse academic fields and advanced in this way the research on the Danube area she published, amongst others, on the participation of women during the protests on the Euromaitan, on LGBT rights, on Ukrainian gender politics, and on the role of women in the military in Ukraine. She gained several academic awards for her writings at the University of Kiev Mohila Academy and in the US. And she also teaches, um, for example, courses like Introduction to Gender Studies, Gender and Politics, Masculinity and Men's Studies, or Social Problems in Ukraine and in the World. And next to those activities of being a teacher and societally engaged, um, she's engaged also in several research projects on gender inequality, also in collaboration with civil society. So all these activities make her an excellent researcher, and I'm happy that the 
the Nubia's Mid-Career Award goes to Tamara Matsenyuk. Congratulations. And also from our side here, congratulations. And um, Tamara Matsenyuk is uh, joining us via Zoom. And uh, Tamara, please, the floor is yours. Yeah, thanks a lot. I'm very, very grateful to organizers for uh, inviting me to this uh, event. And uh, I'm a associate professor from the Department of Sociology, National University of Kyiv-Mohyla Academy from uh, Kyiv, Ukraine, one of the oldest universities. Uh, and uh, for, uh, I am. Uh, I would like uh, to thank all of uh, uh, European and uh, uh, Danube region academic community for your support of Ukrainian researchers, scholars, and students in these uh, terrible times of war. Uh, unfortunately, after Russia's invasion to Ukraine. A number of uh, professors, students, they were forced to flee their cities. Some of universities have been destroyed. And it's very important uh, that uh, we experience uh, solidarity from international educational and uh, research community. And uh, my, uh, I am a sociologist and also educational activists uh, and uh, despite the challenges of war I think it's very important uh, to have a university space and communities to be the safe space and uh, my mission is uh, to make uh, uh, issues of uh, non-discrimination human rights rights, gender equality to be more visible in the Ukrainian society, in the Danube region, in general, in the academia. And one of the possible ways to do this is uh, to implement uh, internal university non-discrimination uh, policies. And I'm really uh, glad that my university, Kiev Mohila Academy, was uh, among the first ones in Ukraine that four years ago implemented such internal university policies. And I am, ha I am a head of committee that is responsible for non-discrimination, gender equality, prevention of gender-based violence, sexual harassment and bullying in the universities. And uh, in my courses while teaching introduction to gender studies, gender and politics and other, I try also to involve students in research of the um, challenges and needs when talking on uh, gender equality. And uh, despite uh, even the fact of uh, full-scale war, in the beginning of this academic year in September, at my university, we managed to have Gender Equality Week, where we gathered um, scholars, activists from Ukraine, our students, and discussed a number of uh, problems. And among these problems, of course, as uh, one that is connected with uh, equal rights opportunities, non-discrimination in the military sphere, in the security and defense sphere. And as far as uh, the war in Ukraine started already actually in 2014, when Crimea, uh, after annexation of Crimea and some parts of uh, Donbass, uh, so there was a demand from, mil first of all, military women who wanted to join uh, volunteer battalions and armed forces and to have the possibility 
to to defend uh, Ukraine and to work in the defense sector on the equal uh, to have equal rights together with men. Uh, so for eight years, I am I was uh, some of my other colleagues from Department of Sociologists. Uh, we uh, we did. Uh, uh, three large sociological studies that uh, was uh, called Invisible Battalion. It's about actually visibility of women in the armed forces. And uh, these studies, they showed uh, successes and challenges of women's involvement in the armed forces. Also, the needs uh, of female veterans and the problem of sexual harassment in the armed forces. And we are currently finishing the research on women's access to military education. And actually, as far as I am public sociologist, I'm not cabinet scholar. I usually cooperate with different other actors of social changes and uh, policies like with civil society activists, with civil servants, politicians, uh, journalists. Uh, so we manage uh, to uh, to turn this sociological study into a larger advocacy campaign about uh, gender equality in the armed forces. And now we could see that step by step for this last uh, eight years, the armed forces of Ukraine actually changed quite a lot. Uh, currently, women constitute around 15-20% um, of the military. It became possible for women to break glass ceiling and uh, we have a couple of female generals now in Ukraine. And in general, it became possible to talk on, uh, uh, you know, to raise the values of professionalism, uh, non-discrimination, non-bullying in the armed forces that are very important values in the security and uh, defense sector. And uh, currently, with the situation of the full-scale war, I do my research uh, about women's involvement in this war. And uh, I also try to stress that women are not only victims of war, uh, because as far as you, you know, it's uh, usually women stereotypically perceived as victims, those who are suffer from gender-based violence, those who are majority among refugees from uh, uh, from Ukraine, but they are. Uh, but the, uh, I try to show that they are also actors, agents of resistance, and analyze different forms of women's participation in uh, in resistance. Uh, so I uh, do believe that with better uh, with understanding of the role of women in protests in war, it's possible to see why and how Ukrainian society resists uh, this terrible invasion. And uh, again, I'm very grateful for your support, uh, solidarity, and do believe that despite the challenges of war, it's important to talk about human rights, uh, uh, non-discrimination, and inequality in different spheres of the society. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that we have seen that on the one hand side, this scientific excellence that we are honoring here um, has a wonderful um, tradition, but also explores new uh, fields of uh, our deeds. We have uh, winners from different um, countries that are honored with this award. And uh, I can only stress one more time that the Mid-Career Award has been solely won by women in academia um, since the start. And uh, I can tell you, because not that I am involved in the selection process, but I'm there to uh, write down the minutes, that this is absolutely not a dominant criteria, but we honor scientific excellence. And it's good to see that despite um, all the hardships that especially you, Tamara, um, are 
uh, experiencing in these uh, circumstances that we are resilient and that, um, that you are uh, resilient and that we are continuing to support this. Um, thank you very much again and of course Slava Ukraini. We are now continuing in our uh, program with the award for the Danubius Young Scientists. And in order to set this stage, I will ask our host, the rector of the University of Maribor, to say a few welcoming words. The uh, University Professor Stravko Kacic, please. Dear Avardis, dear uh, guests, it is my great honor to congratulate you on your achievements. You all make an outstanding achievements on, in your fields, and I am glad that uh, uh, the Nubius Rectors Conference has uh, a means to recognize your achievements through this Young Scientist Award, which is, I would say, uh, very uh, uh, um, well known among the universities in uh, Danube region and even wider and means something to the people uh, that uh, somebody has achieved uh, great achievements and that for were rewarded by these awards. So congratulate you all again for the awards given. It was the tough pro uh, process of uh, evaluating all the proposals and uh, I am glad that uh, we chose the best one. So again, congratulations, enjoy the day and have a nice day in Maribor. Thank you very much. Sravko, thank you um, that we have the possibility to use these wonderful premises for the awards and um, as it has mentioned in the beginning also that not only um, we are giving out uh, this award in uh, a um, collaborative manner with the Austrian Ministry uh, for Science, Research and Education, but we are also uh, doing this together with the Joint Research Center of the European Commission and on behalf of the JRC, Miroslav Veskovic, who is also the Honorary President of the Danube Practice Conference, will say a few words. Miroslav, please. Director General Weidgruber, Rector Fauhammer, Rector Kacic, Mr. Wolasko, the Nubius Awardees, Rectores Magnifici, distinguished colleagues, dear friends. It is my great pleasure to greet you on behalf of the European Commission Science Service Director General Joint Research Center. Of course, our celebrities today are the Nubius awardees, and I wish to congratulate to all of them for their extraordinary scientific achievements and output in relation to the Danube region. We recognize your excellence in research and also your ability to communicate the ideas to a wider audience. The quality of your research and topics you are tackling are some of the guarantees of the European future of the Danube macro region within. The great challenges of our time in environment, science, society, and economy cannot be understood and tackled by any one academic field alone. For science to play a decisive role in addressing these problems in their full complexity, one must focus efforts toward integrated, interdisciplinary, and transdisciplinary approach that look between and beyond borders and sectors. European Commission Director General Joint Research Center, with its task to provide scientific evidences for policy making, can be described as a boundary sitting at the intersection of the scientific and policy sphere. JRC is striving for scientific excellence, and around 81% of the JRC's highly cited publications are the result of international cooperation. Co-creation and co-production are key steps in the transformed science policy collaboration. It is a philosophy of iterative dialogue and multifaceted process of translation from policy questions to research questions, 
from research answers to policy answers. While the future is full of opportunity arising from the extraordinary advances in recent decades, it is also highly uncertain and characterized by growing systemic risks. The scale of opportunities and risk require more attention and more far-sighted attitude. To support that, Joint Research Center has established Competence Center of Foresight. It is focusing on long-term trends and identify areas in which policy, research <clears throat> and technology development are most likely to drive societal, economic and environmental progress. The Strategic Foresight Report put forward resilience as a new compass for the EU policy. Resilience is defined as the ability not only to withstand and cope with challenges, but also to undergo transition in a sustainable, far and democratic manner. The JRC has been supporting the Danube region with a set of instruments and competences, thus helping to develop innovative, socially, economically and environmentally responsible region, which is well integrated into the European framework. The raison d'etre, the main added value of the macro-regional strategies is in cooperation, going beyond sectors and bringing together different actors. A strong human capital base is also needed to be able to think and act across disciplines, moving from isolation to integration and co-creation. Excellent science and uh, technology are indispensable for pushing the boundaries of our knowledge and for development of new ideas and solutions urgently needed for recovery and resilience. With the potential of green transition in the Europe's doorstep, it is important to recall that a key element will be to capitalize on the digital succession role as part of that transformation. Achieving the green digital transition will also mean significant lifestyle changes. The way we live, work, travel, consume will need fundamentally to change due to the impact of both climate and technology. In the same way, the new European Bauhaus initiative connects the European Green Deal to our living spaces. It calls on the Euro Europeans to imagine and build together a sustainable and inclusive future that is beautiful to our eyes, minds and souls. The ultimate focus is beyond buildings. The project should bring benefit to the whole of society. President Ursula von der Leyen said during her State of the European Union address, if the European Green Deal has a soul, then it is the new European Bauhaus. Transcending trans traditional disciplinary Bauhaus boundaries, science and art, see art project of the JRC is ready to not only redesign buildings and urban spaces, but it is also able to imagine and design possible futures and processes needed to get us there. Therefore, I invite you to discover how the Bauhaus initiative is being developed at the JRC, building bridges between science and technology, art, culture, and social inclusion. The Danube region is moving forward, but the success of the region is not solely a result of the infrastructure, but also of the skills and dedication of its young scientists. Therefore, the crucial role of universities must be recognized and supported. And the universities should take that responsibility as well. We are all part of the European research and higher education system. And as Commissioner Maria Gabriel, responsible for research, innovation, education and youth, said recently in her speech, only together we can achieve more. The Danube Strategy, the Danube Rector's Conference, the Danubius Awards are all connecting elements between East and West, North and South, Big and Small, Member States and Accession Countries. Europe must breathe with both lungs, otherwise we will struggle for air. Youth involvement in the Danube strategy, but also in the policy-making process, is the top of the agenda for many organizations. The European Union is an active advocate for young voices and has developed various tools and ideas in the framework of the EU youth strategy 
and the EU macro-regional strategy following this path. <clears throat> Again, we are highly encouraged uh, that your development as a researcher, you will contribute to finding those solutions. We see that young people are more and more understanding great challenges of our time and insist that solutions to these problems be found and to be part of those solutions. You are at the beginning of your scientific careers, but always keep fresh your inquisitive minds, challenge the status quo. This is good basis for your future excellent research. The research that focuses on the excellence stretches horizon and broaden the possibility to benefit society as well. We want to inspire you, but we also want to be inspired by your innovative minds. So it is my pleasure to invite the Danubius Young Scientist Awardees to visit Joint Research Center to learn more about scientific support to the Danube strategy, to visit some of the Joint Research Center laboratories and shadow a JRC scientist for a full day next year. Just two weeks ago, winners of the Danubius Young Scientist Award 2021 together with a group of Czech young scientists in the framework of the cooperation with the Czech presidency of the Council, visited JRC ISPRO site. Allow me to use the words of one of the participants who sent me a message after the event. She said, Dear Professor, thank you very much for the co operational opportunity to visit JRC. I found it very interesting. I'm deeply grateful for the organization and presentation by the kind JRC staff. Many thanks for organizing the individual work shadowing, and I spent a day in the food and feed unit and food contract material laboratory. The researchers from the food contact material have been very kind and willing to teach me. As my research field is related to their activities, the shadowing was incredible and unique experience for me. Thank you again. So, together with my colleagues from the Joint Research Center, I'm looking forward to hosting you in our ISPRA site research in our research site in ISPRA next year. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now we come to the Danubius Young Scientist Award. You might wonder, how can you actually get this award? And if, if you don't wonder, I'm, I'm going to tell you anyways, and you will know in a minute why. Um, the institution that you wrote your, um, that, you, that, you, that awarded you your academic uh, degree has to nominate uh, you. And then we at the IDM collect all the nominations that we've received, check them for the formality criteria, and then hand it to an international jury that independently from each other uh, awards different points to the nominated um, um, work. And then uh, we get these points back and we calculate them together. And uh, with this, the uh, Danubius Young Scientist Award is determined. And uh, sometimes uh, when you are uh, uh, managing director of a, of a uh, you, from, from the years old institution, but uh, work with a, with a relative uh, dynamic team, um, you do not uh, uh, get each and every news immediately. And uh, this year I wasn't able to uh, follow the results of the Danubius Young Scientist Award and uh, I was very much um, um, surprised with uh, whoever got uh, this award and uh, I'm very happy that uh, I can see in uh, all these uh, young faces and uh, I am very happy that we can now at least um, most of you meet here uh, personally. So um, I'm very much uh, looking forward to present you now the awardees from the different uh, countries. The nationality of the awardees is here, the criteria not where at which university they have uh, received their um, last academic um, degree. And uh, we will uh, start in the alphabetical English order of the countries that are awarded this year. We have uh, 13 awards that we are giving out because sometimes uh, it happens that an institution 
non-institution of a country um, nominates um, people. But um, we encourage, of course, especially the representatives of the higher education institutions that are present here in the room to do so also in the following years. The first um, award goes to Austria, and the, this year's awardee is Daniela Apaidit. So no worries, it's just one page. I will keep it short. <laughs> so good, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to express my gratitude uh, to the organizers of this event and, of course, to the members of the jury. Uh, I'm very honored to be awarded with this award. Um, uh, although this initiative aims to foster research in and on the Danube region, uh, the logic behind the award is surprisingly structured by nationalities. Therefore, I received the award, obviously, for Austria. Uh, even if my research is actually very transnational. And I was uh, conducting it at the Andrische University in Budapest. I emphasize this small contradiction because one of the major lessons I learned throughout my studies and research is that the transnational perspective matters, maybe today more than ever, and not just in history. For my PhD thesis, I investigated the bilateral dam project Gabčikovo Nordmoroš, and the protest movement against it in the 1980s. It is titled Stop Nordmoros, uh, um, Eine Geschichte der Grenzüberschreitung, A Story of Crossing Borders. What is this case all about? In 1977, Czechoslovakia and Hungary agreed on building a massive dam system between Gabčikovo and Nordmoros to gain hydropower, to improve the navigability and flood protection. In the mid-80s, due to financial needs of Hungary, Austria stepped in and Austrian companies joined the project as contractors in Nordmoros. At the same time, environmentalists in Hungary guarded against the project and sought support um, from Austrian colleagues and politicians abroad. One reason for this was the case of Heinburg in 1984, so approximately the same time. Uh, Austria witnessed an enormous protest movement as well against another dam along the Danube that would have affected the wetlands of lower Austria. This dam was finally prevented by protesters and the case Heinburg wrote history in Austria. The success in Austria was also observed by environmentalists across the Iron Curtain and led to a fruitful cooperation when it came to Gopchikobo and Nordmaros. The so-called Danube movement was born Ideas of ecologization and democratic participation were exchanged across borders. In my thesis, I aimed to reconstruct this exchange and I focused on the development of cross-border activism. I investigated the country's specific contexts and the various perceptions by state and civil society actors. For this, I used sources from the National Archive of Hungary, the Austrian State Archive and the historical archives of the Hungarian State Security. In addition, I conducted 16 interviews with activists and witnesses and used a lot of pro protest material from their private archives. I'm very happy that the results of my work will be published in the monography in spring 23 in German, but I have very much hope that we will also be able to uh, get a translation to at least to Hungarian to uh, make the exchange even more fruitful. So after many years since I've started this research next to my job, I'm still fascinated of this very chapter of shared history along the Danube. I'm convinced that investigating the protest history um, from a transnational perspective can contribute to a better understanding of history of Europeanization. I wrote this thesis in the field of contemporary history, but it is necessary to include methods and concepts from other disciplines such as protest history and others. You see, crossing borders at many levels is the core of my research interest, and I'm delighted that this transnational perspective apparently also matters to the jury. 
Thank you again for your support and many thanks to everybody who helped me through my PhD journey. Finally, many congratulations to all awardees this year. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, wir wünschen alles Gute für die Zukunft. We will continue with the second uh, awardee from uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Marko Djukanovic, who um, has not had the possibility to join us, but recorded a video message. Hi to all. Uh, my, my name is Marko Djukanovic. Um, I'm from um, Bosnia and Herzegovina, from University of Banja Luka, and where I'm actually serve as an uh, assistant professor uh, let me share my presentation first. Uh, yeah, okay. <clears throat> okay, I hope you see it. Uh, yeah, my field of research is actually in, um, is, uh, in combinatory, deep in combinatorial optimization and artificial intelligence. We are solving uh, pro um, problems uh, which are combinatorial in, the, in their nature, so combinatorial optimization problems and um, they applied actually various uh, uh, methodology from artificial in, uh, intelligence such as meta heuristics, uh, A star search and so on. During my PhD research, uh, I saw the uh, difficult optimization problem but in this specific field of bioinformatics by means of, um, as I said, meta heuristics and artificial intelligence algorithms. So, um, more or less, I solved various of longest common subsequence problems, which which are uh, which is a, a, a popular measure of similarity between uh, um, molecular structures such as RNA, DNA, or protein sequences. I'm interested to currently I'm interested in developing hybrid algorithms, uh, two kind of uh, algorithms, approximate algorithms, which are like actually combination of uh, two or more meta heuristics and uh, any time algorithms, which are special case of exact algorithms, uh, exact uh, uh, hybrid algorithms. And I want to find um, various problems from a combinatorial organization from partitioning, scattering to solve them. Why the research is important for the, the new region? region um, the optimization actually we optimize every day, frequently actually, money, time, resources, happiness. And why not to use these, uh, these algorithms, these tools which we have in disposal to help us to live better? Uh, for instance, make our rivers cleaner, where to set up these cleaners in the river and which, which uh, moment of the, da uh, of the day to, to start or to, to, to turn on them and uh, in which periods of the day to let them work and so on to make uh, to minimizing resources and so on and the second uh, for instance application sharing resources to balance industrial development of each of the regions so or how to uh, separate um, country into more regions such that each of region is actually uh, balanced with their development um, so these are actually application of my so thank you once again for awarding me and I hope you have a nice time in here, there in um, Maribor. So see you. Of course, everybody who is not present will be sent the, um, the, 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 the awards uh, via postal service. And um, also in this case, želimo vam uspeh u vašim budućim we continue um, because we unfortunately did not receive any uh, nominations from Bulgaria. We continue with Croatia. And uh, for Croatia, this year's winner is Jelena Kranjec Ornovic. Good day to everybody. Just to say a couple of words about my research to extend what you can already read uh, here. My uh, research field is forest pathology 
and uh, for the past seven years already, I have been dealing with the pathogens of forestry species which grow in riparian lowland forests, forests of the Danube region. Uh, I have focused, we have focused mainly on the narrow-leaved ash and pedunculate oak. I imagine forestry species you are all familiar with. And unfortunately, they have been threatened, especially narrow-leaved ash, by an invasive pathogenic fungus. And in our research and in my PhD, I have been dealing with this invasive pathogenic fungus and trying to find a means of preservation of narrow-leaved ash. And uh, we, have, we are still working and at our department, uh, Department of, of Forest Protection and Wildlife Management at the Faculty of Forestry and Wood Technology, we still have an ongoing project uh, where we are dealing with this invasive uh, pathogen and trying to find biological methods of preservation for narrow-lived ash with the use of antagonistic fungi, native antagonistic fungi, and also trying to find less susceptible clones of this very valuable tree species because this tree species is very, very ecologically and economically important for these forest ecosystems. This whole time I'm speaking in plural because I have to thank my colleagues from the department and especially my mentor, Professor Darren Kodiminic, who is now here with me today, supporting me for his guidance and helping me through my research. And of course, big thank you to the Austrian Ministry of Education, Science and Research and collaborating institutions for rewarding me and rector and colleagues from the University of Maribor for hosting us here today. Thank you. Thank you, and also here, of course, želimo vam uspeh u vašim budućim produhvatima. It's only going to get worse. <laughs> Don't clap every time. <laughs> Thank you. We will uh, continue with uh, the Czech Republic, and uh, Adila Grams uh, is the awardee. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Adela Grimes, and first I would like to express my gratitude for the Young Scientist Award, because it's a, an honor for my home university, Palatsky University, almost the Czech Republic, and especially for our Department of German Studies. It is also an appreciation of my hard work and many, many hours spent, <laughs> hours, weeks, months and years spent in libraries, archives and at my uh, desk at home. Uh, in my monograph, which is here actually, <laughs> I just brought it here to show, oh no. <laughs> Sorry. Just go on, we fix it. Yes. Uh, Okay. <laughs> in my monograph, New Objective Cool Conduct in Prague German Literature, I linked the phenomenon of Prague Ge German literature with literary uh, new objectivity. And by doing so, I took the first step in the correction in the so far incomplete picture of Prague German literature, uh, because this one used to be connected primarily with new romanticism and expressionism. For my analysis, I chose uh, novels written in the, in the 1930s by three thus far marginalized Prague German authors. I examined their integration into the literary canon of new objectivity, and I also introduced for the first time their biographies in my monograph. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> It's okay, at least it wasn't me, so. <laughs> um, and in this case, yeah, don't worry, we'll, we'll fix it. Let me first get through this, which is uh, 
much more difficult. Prime mnoho usp. Echu v tve dalši vedeke činnosti. Okay. Let's see if we will come back. We will. There we go. Told you. <laughs> Czech is more complicated than uh, technology, for me at least. Um, we continue now with uh, something that makes it easier for me. Uh, Jan Schmidt from Germany. So good afternoon from my side um, and thank you very much for awarding me with such a prestigious prize here. It's really an honor to be standing here with you and spending the afternoon and probably also the evening with all of you together. My name is Jan Schmidt. Um, as you can see originally, I'm from Germany. Uh, I did my PhD studies in Vienna, Austria and currently I'm an assistant professor in international business at the University of Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Uh, so nowadays it's not necessarily a Danube region country anymore, but still my past is related to the Danube region. Um, and I can pretty much build with my research on what Daniela was telling you about the transnational approach, cr crossing borders and so on, because in my research I'm also interested in crossing borders, crossing borders in terms of headquarters of multinational corporations, because we've been witnessing that in the, in the last years, more and more headquarters have actually relocated. Why is that important for the Danube region? Well, look around. The Danube region is actually the, the, the region of origin for a lot of headquarters of very big multinational corporations. And also the, the, the Danube region is hosting a lot of regional headquarters from multinational corporations from all around the world. So the Danube region itself is pretty dependent on headquarters because they provide tax income, they provide great employment opportunities, they ask for some professional services such as banking, accounting, consulting and so on. The question however is, is the Danube region still an attractive region in the future for headquarters because we've been witnessing this relocation across borders of headquarters and this is exactly where my research is trying to make a contribution by showing how the Danube region in the first place can retain existing headquarters in the region and in the second place maybe even attract new headquarters in the future, especially in times of institutional uncertainty such as Brexit for example. So I'm very much looking forward to continuing this research stream in the future, maybe also in different regions, but in the past I've been focusing especially on the Danube region. I would like to close off by thanking uh, very much, especially my PhD committee that has been shaping uh, my overall research journey a lot, by thanking my past and my current colleagues and co-authors that have definitely provided a lot of valuable input for my research. And last but not least, I would also like to thank my family and my girlfriend for always supporting me. And thanks a lot for hosting us here. Let's celebrate together in the evening and I'm very much looking forward to spending the time with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, um, auch wir wünschen alles Gute für die zukünftigen Unternehmungen. Um, we will continue with uh, Hungary, and uh, here the award is Blanka Bartosz. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude uh, to the Dean of the Faculty of Law at the University of Saged, who nominated me to this award. And secondly, thank you so much for the committee for having selected me for this award. I'm really honored and grateful for being here uh, today. 
Um, actually, uh, currently, I'm a PhD student in France at the University of Burgundy, and I finished uh, my studies in Hungary um, five years ago uh, at the University of Szeged, uh, where I am a lawyer. And I wanted to pursue my career in France um, about the contracts uh, for the advanced therapy medical uh, products. These are innovative therapies, uh, life-saving treatments, cell and gene therapies, and these are the most expensive drugs uh, in the world today. And my research has started from Hungary uh, because I've heard about Zolgansma. This treatment costs 2 million euros. Uh, this is the most expensive treatment in the world today. And um, the second one in Europe who received this treatment was a Hungarian little boy, one year old. And the Hungarian citizens collected this amount of money in only six days. So this was a record. And uh, after that, the Hungarian government um, decided to reimburse these kind of treatments 100%. So today, it's free for Hungarians but not for the other citizens in the world. And we know that's not possible in the future because gene therapies or innovative treatments are quite recent. Uh, they came to the market in the last 10 years. So we need new regulations because they cannot fit in the legal framework today. So that's why we are working uh, on uh, the development of new type of contracts to make these kind of treatments available for everyone because I don't believe that life would be depend on money and I think it's quite sad that we can die if we discover tomorrow if you have a genetic disease or little cancer and we cannot pay uh, the price. So we hope that uh, in some years uh, during my PhD uh, we can find a solution and really hope that we can save lives with it. So thank you so much again. Minden jött kívánom ke a jövőben. Uh, we will continue with uh, Moldova and uh, the winner for uh, this year is Nikolai Anna. Dear guests, dear professor, dear participants, it's a great pleasure for me to be here in Maribor and to say good evening, everyone. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to all which put a lot of effort to have this award ceremony here in Maribor. Uh, from IDM, Government of Austria, European Commission and the University in Maribor. My name is Nikolai and I'm coming actually from Moldova, but I'm a PhD student in Romania at National Political School and Public Administration. Actually, when I started my PhD, I didn't expect that in one year in Ukraine will be a war. But actually, my subject, which we have focused just to analyze some frozen conflict, some regarding of soft power or hard power of Russia actually is realistic, unfortunately. And of course, the topic which includes Eastern Partnership and relation Russia-European Union actually is very actual for everyone and every country in Europe. Because regional security in Europe means also European security. And actually, Moldova, together with Ukraine, choose a way. And actually, it's European way. European principle and European democracy. And no one will stop in this way. Actually, I started to analyze this and to support this aspect of citizen of Moldova, citizen of Ukraine, 
because we sign association agreement, DCFTA, and they are long process of European integration. I hope these two countries and also Georgia will be one day member of European Union and Europe will be just peace, stability, and economic development. Thank you so much. Madurim tot binele in demersurile voastre viatoare. <laughs> we continue with Milos Brian Brajovic from Montenegro, who cannot be with us today, but sent a video message. Good afternoon. My name is Milos Brajovic. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Montenegro, Faculty of Electrical Engineering. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to the jury for selecting me as one of the Danubius Young Scientist Awardees. Of course, I am also thankful to the organizers and supporters of this initiative. It is a great honor to receive such an important and prestigious award. My research interest includes signal processing, data analytics and machine learning. In particular, I am interested in time frequency signal analysis, compressive sensing and data analytics on graphs. I have participated in several international projects connecting researchers from the Danube region, including researchers from Montenegro, Serbia, Croatia, and Slovenia, covering various uh, signal processing and data analytics topics and building capacity for further collaborative research. Uh, together, we have published many papers in peer reviewed journals and at international conferences. Uh, compressive sensing deals with the reconstruction of missing data based on a reduced number of observations. In many applications, some parts of data are unavailable due to our intentional acquisition strategy, for example, the big data paradigm, or due to uh, physical constraints and limitations or high corruption. These data can be reliably and accurately reconstructed using compressive sensing algorithms with some quite realistic and mild assumptions and requirements. Uh, with compressive sensing approaches, we can reconstruct various types of data, digital images, audio signals, satellite images, radar data, and so on. This is useful in the sensor-related monitoring of natural environments and in the acquisition, analysis, and processing of meteorological, climate, or hydrographic data, for instance. Graph signal processing deals with irregular domains represented with mathematical structures known as graphs a series of vertices connected by edges. This particular structure uh, ensures that interdependencies and topological information are also used in the data processing. In this way, data acquired using sensors at various locations, for example, temperature sensors, are processed and analyzed in new and more comprehensive manners. This commonly reveals some unobvious and hidden relations among the data points. Thank you very much. I would also like to send my congratulations to all fellow awardees. Kind regards from the next. Želimo vam sve najbolje u vašim budućim produktima. Get better every time, does it? Not really. I don't know. But we continue with Mihaela Kudabeanu from uh, Romania, who also sent a video message. Hello everyone, I am Hela Kodalbeanu, PhD in Chemistry and I am from Romania. I work as a Chemistry Research Assistant at the Research Center for Environmental Protection and Waste Management, University of Bucharest, Romania. I have expertise in the organic chemistry field, especially in the extraction, analysis and characterization of natural bioactive compounds and their biological properties like antitumoral, antimicrobial and antioxidant. I think my research is very important because aquatic plant species present in the Danube Delta Biosphere Reserve are an important source of biological active natural compounds with various pharmacological properties. This research contributes to the development of aquatic species field of analysis in terms of the development of new methods of separation, identification and analysis of natural chemical compounds of interest to the pharmaceutical or food industry. In the end, I want to thank you for this opportunity and to congrats all the winners. All the best.
binele în demersurile voastre viotare, toare. Our next winner is Zorana Mataruga from Serbia. Hello to everyone from my side also. I am um, I was really surprised and uh, to be chosen among the winners, but I'm feeling so great and grateful to be here among everyone. I want to thank to my university and my institute for nominating me and the jury for selecting my work and recognizing it as the important for the Danube region. Um, my name is Zorana. My last name was changed in the meantime because I got married and there is my baby over there sleeping if you hear it. <laughs> Maybe you hear it giggling, so I'm sorry, but that's just a baby. Uh, I'm a researcher in the University of Belgrade, the Institute of, for Biological Research in Stankovic, that is the National Institute of the uh, Republic of Serbia. I work in the Department of Ecology. I'm specialized in plant ecology and to be more specific, I uh, work on a um, field uh, with the potentially toxic element and their influence on the plants. So my research uh, was um, most uh, dominantly related to that uh, part. My thesis was um, conducted on the Sava River, which is the largest sub-basin of the Danube uh, and one of the most important. We chose for uh, our, our research, me and my team, uh, the localities which are uh, most, uh, uh, which are most uh, how to say that, I'm sorry, uh, polluted with a potentially toxic element, which includes heavy metals. And we tested the plants that are living there naturally, uh, like alochton, uh, 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 sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry because I was so focused on my baby, so I uh, forget my speech. Uh, we chose and tested the plants and we found out which plants are good as bioindicating the uh, potentially toxic elements in riparian soils. So uh, the research could be used in every other uh, riparian soils uh, on any other river including Danube. My team also has done some uh, research with the, the similar species on the Danube River, but my research was on the uh, River Sava. This research could help in uh, creating ecological strategies for restoration of degraded ecosystems in the coastal zone of big rivers. So I think it could be really uh, good used in the future and uh, good strategies could get out of this research. Uh, we plan to continue with the similar researches in the future and I hope that uh, the heavy metal and the potential toxic element problems will uh, disappear in future in uh, entire Danube River. And I want to thank you everyone and uh, have a good day in Maribor. See you tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, uspeh u vašim budućim poduhvatima. Uh, yes, I, I, I will. Um, the wonders of, of hybrid uh, technologies. Okay, we uh, continue. I know we're getting a little bit over the, the time schedule, but uh, nevertheless, um, we, of course, uh, want to uh, allocate the um, necessary time that uh, everyone deserves and we continue with Tibor Zygmunt from Slovakia.
Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tibor Zsigmond uh, from uh, Slovakia. I'm uh, working as assistant professor at uh, J. Shea University in Komárno, Slovakia. And uh, in first line, I would like to thank you all for this uh, opportunity, and uh, I'm so grateful. And I would like to uh, thank to uh, my supervisor, Renata Machova, and also the management of the university, because uh, they were su supporting me for a long time through my uh, studies. And uh, uh, just a few words about my work. I am dealing with uh, topics like management, human resources, and small and uh, medium enterprises. And in this uh, spe specific, specific wor uh, work that was sent to this uh, Award, I was dealing with emotional intelligence at the workplace, which was uh, a part of my uh, dissertation too. And uh, the importance of uh, emotional intelligence uh, became very important, specifically in these times of uh, uh, COVID-19 and uh, war and the crisis uh, around this uh, too. And uh, uh, I was uh, doing my research about emotional intelligence and the connection between the knowledge sharing. And uh, when we were doing the research, uh, then we came to a conclusion that there wasn't, uh, uh, there weren't uh, more, uh, there weren't a lot of uh, studies about these uh, uh, two uh, topics and the connection between them. So the, we wanted to make a base for this for the future and not just for the V4 countries where we did the uh, research actually on v V3. But uh, I, we think it's, uh, it can be a good base for the future for all the European countries because uh, the SMEs, so the small and medium enterprises, uh, have a defi defining roles in all of these uh, countries' economics, and that's all. Thank you very much. Prajame vam vsetk o najlepšije do budučnosti. We will continue with Slovenia, um, Zane Timova Rakusha, and uh, I think it's uh, your turn now to, to join us. Uh, good evening. I hope you can hear me. We do. Okay, so um, my name is Zane Timova Rakusha, and I come from the Faculty of Pharmacy, University of Ljubljana. Uh, where I work as a teaching assistant and researcher. Um, I'm very grateful and honored to be one of this year's Young Scientist Award winners for my PhD thesis in pharmacy, in which we initially focused on the establishment of comprehensive analytical methodology for the evaluation of hydrophilic and lipophilic vitamins and coenzyme Q10 by which we uh, managed to overcome the current limitations of the published analytical methods and offer a tool for their quality, for their time and cost-effective evaluation. Uh, we also provided new and quantitative data on the stability of individual vitamins and coenzyme Q10 in different systems, which is especially important for the quality of assurance, assurance of vitamin products. Uh, with the aim of their quality improvement, we further focused on their stabilization and provided innovative and industrially applicable approaches for their proper formulation. Uh, finally, we performed quality control of a wide range of medicines, food supplements, food and cosmetic products on the Slovenian market, including frequently used products by the most vulnerable populations. Uh, as inadequate quality is associated with the product safety and efficacy, the findings of the so far most extensive research in this region represent info important information not only for, for professionals, but also for consumers and the wider public. This research also contributes to the greater awareness of the current situation of the quality of commonly used products by the general public and highlight the need of 
for more effective stabilization of vitamin in products and provide an evidence-based foundation for the government, national and regional competent food safety authorities towards the creation of appropriate regulation and policies, especially for food supplements and food products. At the end, I would like to express my gratitude to everyone who contributed to my PhD thesis, especially my, ma my mentor, Professor Dr. Robert Roshkar, and to all of you for your kind attention. Želimo vam se najboljsje pri budočnih projektih. And um, last but not least, we uh, come to the Danubius Young Scientist Award winner from Ukraine, Ilya Diachovchenko. here today. Uh, I am Ilya Dehoshenka. I am from Ukraine, Sumer State University. This is northeast of Ukraine. And in my research uh, with my colleagues, uh, we look for contemporary technologies which will help to make the transition of our traditional power grids to smart grids. And this paradigm of a smart grid will become a reality someday. So we will, we will try to accelerate this process. Uh, in general, uh, my research can be divided in two subdivisions. First one is related to reliability and resiliency of power systems, which means uh, we are looking for new ways to make our power distribution grids more resilient and be able to continuously and uninterruptibly supply critical loads. And uh, the second subdivision is related to uh, proliferation of individual prosumers and energy communities. Uh, generally saying, we are all consumers. We consume electricity. But uh, if we start to not only buy electricity from the grid, but also to sell it back to the grid using our local distributed generation, we can become proactive consumers, prosumers. And possibly we can also trade electricity in local markets. So we think that uh, uh, this is going to be the future of our grids and we study how to uh, make this uh, prosumer-related and uh, energy community-related solutions uh, uh, profitable and uh, feasible. And uh, next, uh, a big challenge for the upcoming research for me is uh, how to make our grids resilient against uh, terroristic attacks. In particular, uh, this is happening uh, nowadays in Ukraine, and um, it turns out that our power systems are not well protected against uh, military attacks, and uh, this is really a challenge for all electrical engineers, power engineers, and hopefully we will soon find the ways how to make our power systems robust and protected against these types of threats. Thank you for your attention. Mi bažajemo vam vsjogo najkrašogo v vaših 
my bitnych staraniach. <laughs> well, um, thank you very much to everyone who uh, was involved in making this ceremony a reality. I think uh, we had a wonderful uh, possibility to uh, see the broad variety of the Danube region and its scientific excellency. I will not uh, keep you any longer, but nevertheless, I need to thank a few people. First and foremost, of course, uh, Director General uh, Barbara Weidgruber in um, uh, cooperating, continuing cooperating with us with this, uh, with this award. Um, of course, also to Martina Hartl, who makes uh, the creation and the, and the administrative part uh, so easy. I uh, also, of course, thank uh, the chairman of the Institute for the Danube Region in Central Europe for entrusting us with this um, administrative handling. And here especially also Daniel Martinek, uh, who did not only in the back hopefully make the stream go uh, sound and uh, smooth, um, but I haven't heard any complaints yet. Um, he also coordinates that on our behalf. And then last but not least, of course, we uh, would like to thank the Danube Rectors Conference, and here especially the um, President Stravko Kacic, Vice President uh, Ivanka Popovic, Vice uh, President uh, Friedrich Faulhammer, and Honorary President um, uh, Miroslav Veskovic. Last but not least, I thank the technicians in the back, who I think did a tremendous job. Thank you so much. I, um, Combining Zoom calls and uh, two YouTube live streams, um, the, 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 the camera feed, microphone feed, absolutely fantastic. Everything that went wrong is uh, entirely my fault. And now, of course, we are very much looking forward to actually have the possibility to have something to drink later on. The ones who can't join us, um, I would suggest at around 2022, eight, 20 minute, 22 minutes after 8, we raise collectively a glass wherever you are. We know where we will be. And then uh, we'll have um, a celebration of scientific excellence in the Danube region. My name is Sebastian Schaeffer, and uh, I had a tremendous time. Thank you very much for bearing with me, and uh, all the best. I will not repeat that in all the other languages <laughs> that were present here. Thank you very much, and take care. Um, yes, why not? And uh, come to the stage for a, for a group photo, please.